Significant TV, Significant Stories, Significant Entrepreneurs. I'm Fran McNeil, your host, and joining me in the studio today is Joel F. Smith, President and CEO of J.F. Smith & Associates. Joel, welcome to Significant TV. Well, thank you very much. Thanks for having me. I'm looking forward to our discussion today. Thank you. It's a pleasure having you on the show. We've known each other for a number of years, and it's really fascinating the way in Philadelphia, uh, the entrepreneurial ecosystem, the corporate environment just kind of continues to bring people together. So um, I would love to begin our discussion with how did you begin on that path entrepreneurship. You've got a business literally with your name on it. It's an, an interesting question. Mm -hmm. So I had always wanted to have a business. I'm an engineer by training. I spent mm -hmm. most of my career in manufacturing. Mm -hmm. So I always thought I needed bricks and mortar to have a business. Mm -hmm. uh, 16 years ago when I left what, my last corporate job I decided I wanted to do something different and I realized what I had been fundamentally as an engineer even though I gravitated to senior management was a problem solver mm. and who are the problem solvers but consultants right. so I started the first of what was now the first firm now I have a second uh, firm which does primarily consulting for for-profits and non-profits but it was that idea of, of using those problem solving skills mm. that it motivated me to want to help companies mm -hmm. help companies very often the the owner or the CEO kind of get out of their own way there's usually things that are that are stopping them from getting to that next level or or keeping them up at night right right engineering is a very specific discipline there's a way that engineers think there's a way that they approach problem solving and entrepreneurs often are kind of like I know it all or I'm gonna do it my own way or I'm gonna make up the new way how do you balance those two perspectives. Uh, well, I don't know if I do such a great job. <laughs> oh, come but on. I I Confidence and courage. We heard that at the last interview. <laughs> so, so it, it is interesting. Uh, mm -hmm. What I found, the reason I really wound up getting out of engineering was I wasn't so interested in the details. I could do mm -hmm. details, but mm -hmm. I wasn't so interested in that. I really was a big picture guy. And, and I actually, it turns out, always had this entrepreneurial bent to, to me, but I, but the engineering sort of dragged me into this more regimented, okay. and so I had to reinvent myself, and mm. I think that's really what happened when I started my first business, because I'd never done business development. I basically do very little of the consulting. I'm the business development person for the, okay. for the organization, mm -hmm. uh, and when I tell people that I'm an engineer, they're usually surprised, because that's not usually what you expect. You don't sound like an engineer. Well, you actually talk to people. That's no, right. I'm kidding. But, but it's, it's, it's stereotypical, right. but it's right. somewhat true. Mm -hmm. Engineers like to just be left alone, mm -hmm. do their job, do it well, and you know get their paycheck mm -hmm. and move on. Right. I always like the big picture, and that's mm -hmm. why I gravitated, and I really love the idea of of helping companies improve. It's not always just about the bottom line. Mm -hmm. I mean, that is the result that they want, right. but also to make their lives simpler and, and, and demystify some of the problems that go on in a business. Well, speaking of demystifying, what are some of the myths of running a profitable business, and how do you demystify? I think the, the main myth is that it's difficult. That, that things like, especially we work a lot with nonprofits right. and, and understanding the business aspect, understanding the numbers, mm -hmm. understanding mm -hmm. metrics, mm -hmm. uh, they seem to be barriers and then in some ways they're, they're, it's so enabling to them to actually have some facts to work with okay. rather than working from the gut. Entrepreneurs like to work from the gut. Yes, yes. And uh, that can only get them so far. Right. And so what you have to do is sort of drag them down and say, look, let's talk a little bit about what the facts are. Let's understand some of the things that are going on here. Uh, and that me doesn't mean I'm going to tell you what decision to make, but I'm going to mm -hmm. help you make a more informed, a more intelligent decision mm -hmm. with a little bit of factual basis to mm -hmm. it. Right. Entrepreneurs often sort of think inside their head and their gut and may not consider the environment, the market, the competition. Um, or only when pressed. <laughs> so. Well, it's interesting you say that because, as I said, I, I've had two businesses, and, mm -hmm. and 
in each iteration, I thought I understood what the client wanted. Mm -hmm. And what you have to learn when you, I had to learn for myself, but what business owners have to learn, especially entrepreneurs, is just because they have a great idea. <laughs> that doesn't necessarily mean they have an idea that anybody cares about. Right, right. And you really have to listen to your market and understand that. And that's part of what we do. Mm -hmm. uh, some of, most of our clients are established businesses, but they're run by entrepreneurs. They've had a good track record. Right. They've been doing things for a long, long time. They've been successful, and they hit a little bump in the road, and they don't understand. And the gut isn't always the way to mm -hmm. get them to that next level. Mm -hmm. And right. a lot of what we do is just help them get over that sort of speed bump in the road. Right, right. Tell me a little bit about the kinds of clients. You, you've referred to nonprofits, mm -hmm. more established companies. Um, what kinds of clients, and, and maybe more importantly, what kinds of results do you bring to clients that they say, wow, I am so glad that I had a chance to work with you and your firm, Joel? So, to put a little size around it, uh, most of our clients are 10 to 250 million in revenue. Mm -hmm. our, about half of our clients are for profit, mm -hmm. half are non profit. The non profit business actually was something that we didn't start out going after. It was, mm -hmm. I, I say, we got into that business accidentally. Um, and some of those clients can be very, very small. I love working with non profits because they're, they're so passionate about what they do and they're, and they're unmotivated. Mm -hmm by the financial side. Right. And right. that lack of motivation about the financial side is what gets them into trouble. Right. And so you talk about a result that's mostly what we do is again demystify the the financials, demystify the use of technology, mm -hmm. even in the HR realm, understanding mm -hmm. how to better deal with people. Mm -hmm. uh, that just helps them run their business in, in a smarter way and eliminates a lot of the distractions. I mean they're mm -hmm. so focused on mission. Mm -hmm. And when they hear a, a business term, sometimes I used to kiddingly say when I would first talk to them, they'd want to run out of the room. Mm -hmm, right. And I had to find a vernacular mm -hmm. that made them comfortable, that I wasn't this business guy that was trying to change them into something they didn't want to be. Right, right. But there's right. a lot of similarity, and it's an interesting thing, because most of our uh, for-profit clients are privately held. Mm -hmm. And they're emotional businesses. You know, yes. they're entrepreneurs. They might have family in the business. They're right. so there's a, sometimes a lot of emotion that gets in the way. Just like in nonprofits, the emotion there is more about the mission. Right. But uh, but nonetheless, it's sort of giving them sort of maybe that's that logical engineering part of right, it. Right. Right. Calm sort down. Of calm down. Yeah, right. Calm Be down. Be calm and, and let's, carry let's, on. Let's talk about this. Let's talk right. about this problem. How do we get around it? How can we help you? So me, most of the time, what we're doing is we're showing them how to how to make smarter decisions. Mm. How how there are certain rules to running a business, mm -hmm. and it's best to, to abide by them, you know, just so you do it, just do a better job of managing your business. And, it, and that takes away a lot of these sleepless nights, right, sleepless nights right, right. that these CEOs might have. Right, right. Your company is called J.F. Smith and Associates. Who are the associates? How big is your firm? Brag a little bit. Oh, okay. Well, there's yes. 14 of us. Mm -hmm. um, the, the name is a funny thing. I, I had this idea. In fact, I always bristled at the idea of having my a company named after me. Mm -hmm. and, and so w when we first started it, I had a group of us around a table mm -hmm. and what should we call it? We had all different clever names. And part of the problem with my previous business was people misunderstood. Right. I love the name. I came right. up with the name. Right. But they right. thought we were in a totally different business. So one of my associates said, why don't you just name it after you? Mm -hmm. And I said, well, at least there'll be no confusion. Some guy <laughs> named Smith <laughs> right. is running this business. And right. so that's what we did. Mm -hmm. And I think in the end it was a smart decision because when I sit across from a client and I'm telling them about us, I'm mm -hmm. also saying, I'm putting my name on this. Right. I'm putting my name, my reputation, everything about me, mm -hmm. but it's all about them. Yes. But they, yes. Ha they have to understand that it's important to me to do a quality job, that we're going to do the best we can. And we're not driven by blowing out a big assignment. If we can do mm -hmm. it quickly and get out, because most companies, most people want you in and out as a consultant. Right. If they wanted right. you as an employee, they'd, they'd hire, hire you. Right. you, right. But right. as a consultant, right. they want you in and out as quickly right. as possible. So 
Um, we uh, we cover a lot of territory. We're with broad category. We're management consultants, right. but we really focus on every aspect of the business. Because what I found when I was on the other side, I, we were getting like half solutions when we brought consultants in. If we brought a finance consultant in, that's all they knew. So we put together a team. We have a finance, mm. IT, HR, and marketing group. Mm -hmm. And it's not unusual for two or three or four of us to be involved in varying degrees right. with almost every project that right. we do. And that makes sense because companies are run in like kind of 360 degree. I mean, all of the functions ideally should function well, and so why shouldn't a management consulting firm bring in um, key functions to help them move forward? Yeah, you would think that we went, I don't know very many others that do mm -hmm. as much as mm -hmm. we do. You know, when I started out in my career as engineering, they kept all these functions very, very separately. I kidding you to say, yeah. not only silos, but barbed wire between the departments, oh, right? Oh, okay. But yeah. today, everything's intertwined. There's no decision that's made that doesn't impact every aspect. And every, every one of these disciplines needs to have a seat at the table. And they don't mm -hmm. always have a seat at the table right. with right. companies. So right. like the HR people often complain, that's right. You know, nobody's listening to us. Mm -hmm. Yet the company has hundreds or thousands. In many cases, our clients have thousands mm -hmm. of employees. Mm -hmm. uh, and they all say that employees are the most important aspect of their business. But, you know, really to give HR that seat at the table is very, very important. So we, we help them get that seat mm -hmm. at the table. This show, Joel, is about significant stories. And we, we have about a minute or so left. But your company is creating a legacy. You're making an impact on businesses in the area. When people work with you, what is it that you want them to say about you and your firm? So I want them to say that we, we left them in a much better place than they were before, mm -hmm. that we gave them some perhaps tools to better operate, better run their business, to feel more confident, more comfortable mm -hmm. in their own skin. Because in the end, we're, we're kind of their coach too. Yes. Yes. Um, we're doing it in a little bit different way, but we're helping them feel a little bit more confident. They probably have a, a part of them that says, uh, I don't really know much about finance, so I'm not going to explore that very much. Mm -hmm. So that whole demystification part, mm. we're saying it's not so difficult. And it's not such a bad thing to not know everything. None right, of us, right. none of us exactly. knows everything. You need a team. So how can people find out about you, Joel? Very, very easy. We have a website. Mm -hmm. It's uh, JF Smith and Associates. It's all one word. Uh, there's a lot about us. There's biographies mm -hmm. about all of our consultants. Mm -hmm. uh, we have testimonials from our clients. We have client lists so you can see who we've worked with. Mm -hmm. We've worked with some of the very, very well-known companies and, and nonprofits in the region. So uh, that's the best place to go. And also, they can, they can call us. Excellent. So should I give you the, the phone Absolutely. number? Absolutely. So 215-646-5520 is the phone number. Excellent. Joel, this has been wonderful. I, I love this concept of demystifying and at the same time helping people improve their company. Well, thank you. And thank you so much for inviting me to be on. Yeah. It was such a pleasure and yeah. so much fun. Thank you. Significant stories, significant entrepreneurs like Joel F. Smith of J. Joel J. F. Smith and Associates. Continue to join us and watch us as we share significant stories of entrepreneurs across the Philadelphia region.